What's going on guys, Steel here. Gotta re-record this first part, but uh, today is going to be a AGM tutorial for all the air-to-ground missiles in game that are featured on uh, fixed-wing aircraft. Nothing about um, helicopters, obviously. This is entirely for jets. Now, I just want to go over the first part of this, kind of make it a bit shorter, a bit less drawn out, and a bit more straight to the point. AGMs come in two forms in War Thunder currently, keyboard guided and mouse guided, aka beam riding, and radio control. So the bull pups, I'm sure everyone is familiar with this, they've been in the game for quite a long time now, are keyboard slash radio controlled. Well, they're technically mic loss, so yeah, ma manually controlled basically. And um... We have the A4E now, and I meant to do this a long time ago when it came out, but I got a bit sidetracked. There's one very, very important thing that you need to understand about AGMs in this game. You have to look at the yaw and pitch axis weapon aiming keys. I have them set to the arrow keys on my keyboard, so I can fly with my mouse, use zoom on my mouse wheel, and guide missiles with the keyboard with my left hand while well, flying is pretty much being done with my right hand maximum value is right minimum value is left you do not want inverted on you do not want relative control on for pitch minimum is up and maximum is down no invert and no relative control you can mess with the settings however you like but uh... depending on the keybinds that you choose However, you do not want relative control on because relative control will keep missiles moving in a certain direction. Similar to how with the VTOL, you do not want uh, relative control off where it would just reset the VTOL controls to a certain position. You want the opposite of this. So if I fire a bullpup right now without relative control on, the missile will constantly correct itself after I let go of input. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, you see horizontal and vertical guidance with it going from zero to either 100 or negative 100 percent. You do not want relative control on because it would say stick at maybe 50 percent and just constantly turn. You do not want that. This will make it so you can pretty much just make small corrections and let the missile just kind of do its thing and hit the target. Got a couple of targets down the road here. Lots of MBTs. So I'm just going to take a crack shot at them now. I also turned down the volume because I am using a sound mod that is horribly loud. And it was just kind of hard to hear me in the first place. Still working out some audio issues. But as you can see, hit a target, killed it. Bullpups are pretty damn powerful. We'll go into AGM 12 Cs after this and consecutively pretty much every other AGM in the game. Good rule of thumb for AGM 12 Bs and AS 20 Nords is that if you see the glow of the missile on the target, you pretty much are going to hit it, and you just want to maintain that little rule of thumb. I've got a little bit more experience with them while this bow tries to kill me, but see, as long as the orange glow is on the target that you're shooting at, it will hit. It's kind of the same thing with guiding toes against aircraft. Um, back before War Thunder's like servers were so dog shit and missiles wouldn't just phase through aircraft half the time. Basically, just keep the missile on, like, say if it's like an image, you want the missile in the foreground of the target that you're looking at, and it'll pretty much hit every time. So that's a good rule of thumb for AGM-12Bs and AS-20 Nords, which um, are probably the best in the game in terms of quantity and uh, the damage that they dealt. The G9103 can carry four Nords. G91R4 premiums can both carry only two Nords. However, they can also carry AA Nords, which are anti-air, while the AS are anti-ship, or well, basically anti-ground in this game. As you can see, the AGM-12B did do pretty good against that PT boat. Now, again, it is important that you practice with these and you understand what your controls are, your control scheme, and how you're going to go about it. Because once you get pretty good, you can pretty much just guide a bullpup while zoomed in. 
and kind of pull off to the target and kind of just eyeball like the corner of your screen and watch the little orange uh, dot of the missile land the target, which is why I said the rule of thumb is as long as the dot of the missile's uh, engine basically is on the target, you'll hit them. So it's it's pretty much just all down to eyeballing skill and practice. That's a street light that I just flew through. Say I want to hit. Uh, let's see. See, I want to hit the red light on this black building over here, but I don't want to fly directly at it because that's an AA. I can just kind of just out of the corner of my eye see the glow, and well, that was roughly, but get the idea. AGMs, uh, 12Bs have been nerfed over the years since the FJ4B came to the game and they are less maneuverable now but they are still pretty damn maneuverable and probably the best in the game slightly slower than AS20 Nords it feels like uh, but they're definitely better at uh, correction and honestly it's just really just down to skill and getting used to it but yeah hopefully that's a little bit shorter than my original take and uh, we'll move on to the AGM 12C bullpup thank god they have these on the A4E <laughs> so I can test these ones out too at the same time. Now, the AGM-12C is a bit different. It's faster, it's less maneuverable, and I believe it's the only missile that is of like a bigger size compared to the Nords, because there's the AS-20, which is on the Gen ones, and the AS-30, which is on the Mirage, which most likely most of you will never really interact with, but that one is inverted. These shouldn't be. Yeah, they shouldn't be. Also, it just basically just clipped through the airplane. It's nice. The AGM-12C, while faster, does seem to have to accelerate. It's a little s more sluggish because it's much bigger. Um, and it's got a bigger punch. However, as you can see, I mean, I just splashed them. I personally would not recommend it, as you can see. If you're going fast, which I'm probably going to crash here. If you're going fast, specifically something like the Phantom, which goes past Mach, which the Skyhawk does not do. You will actually go faster than the bull pump, and you will not see it, and you'll you'll either fail at killing a target, or you'll just dunk yourself into the ground trying to find it, and or get shot down. So AGM-12Cs, I wouldn't really recommend. AGM-12Cs would be really good against ships, uh, more like Cold War frigate type ships, really, than um, uh, than ground targets in War Thunder, and also you get more bull pups that are uh, the AGM-12B rather than the 12C. The F4C gets four. The F4E only gets AGM-12Cs. So if you don't have the F4E yet, or and or you don't have a Skyhawk, uh, and you just have an F4C for whatever reason, you should probably just use the F4C in ground battles uh, if you're going to use bullpups. So that's just a bit, little bit of a tidbit kind of tip uh, if you're playing America. AGM-12Bs just really aren't that worth it. Uh, I mean, and you only get two of them on the Skyhawk, the A4E specifically, when in turn you can just get five bullpups. If you hit somebody directly with a bullpup, nine times out of ten, the bullpup is going to kill them. So, bullpup wise, that's pretty much it, all you need to know. Use AGM-12Bs, practice with them, they're more maneuverable than Nords, and that's about it for the AGM-12B and C bullpup. Now we're going to move on to the Nords. Here we are in the Entendard with the AS-20 Nord which most of you should be familiar with if you've ever encountered <laughs> Germany 9.0 <laughs> with the with the G91R3. Probably would have made more sense to take that instead, but considering the Mirage has the AS30 Nord, it just makes it easier for me to hot swap. Now, you're going to notice that the uh, AS20 is faster while also being less nimble. AS20s are really good at sniping things. The AA20, which is on the G91R4, for Italy, I'm not sure if it's on the German one, I would have to check, are actually anti-air guided ones, they're not uh, anti-ground roll. Technically they're all anti-ship missiles, hence AS, but you get the idea. Pick another MBT target right here. And as you can see, it already is pretty much outpaced an AGM-12B. Much, much faster, but still deadly. We're gonna save the PT boat for the AS-30 Nord, but yeah. The controls for these are the same as the bull pumps. No inverted controls, so if you go and practice with bull pumps and then you go and practice with AS20s, they're going to feel really similar. Again, just agility and speed is basically the main difference.
See, it is just as nimble as the bee, roughly, but because it's faster, it's much, much harder to recorrect the closer it gets to a target. Oh, I just got clipped by a machine gun. That's cool. So, yeah. I'll do one more demonstration with the AS-20s, and then we'll move on to the AS-30. You know what's faster than waiting for the reload time? Just spawning in. <laughs> so, yeah, one more time. We can do another demonstration. You want to pay attention to the range on your air to ground missile too and just kind of start practicing but on most ground maps you're going to spawn maybe just a little bit outside the range of the missile otherwise you'll be fine wow that sea whiz is like really trying to kill me i thought they fixed the whole overheating thing but apparently not so yeah one more time before the patrol boat kills me that's the new one by the way with the sea whiz so right see now when it comes to leading a target as well, the AS-20 suffers the same fate as the bullpup with being blinding. However, this changes on the RBO-5As, and I think the AS-30 is a little bit less noticeable, but speaking of which, we'll switch to that right now. So here we are, the AS-30 Nord, which you can tell is, if I can get the camera right, much, much bigger. It's also the first missile that we are going to encounter that is inverted, and it's annoying because this missile is also fast, about as fast as a AS-20, I believe. Maybe a little bit slower. It's kind of like the AGM-12C, where it kind of slugs along. Oh, wow, I gotta look at the reflecting water, I can barely see that. But it is much, much harder to guide. Also, that rule of thumb that I was talking about with keeping the orange is a little bit more difficult than the AS-20 in the bull pump because you'll you'll think especially going up against boats you know in custom missions or anything because right now currently in naval you're not going to be able to use this thing obviously but say if you're playing on like my Falklands map and you're using uh, the AS-30 and you want to go kill a frigate or something it may look like it's on target but because it's a little bit less nimble and just how it appears from the position of the camera of the Mirage I guess you could say it won't always hit you should always give slight correction for the AS-20s and the AGM-12Bs and 12Cs, but it's definitely probably the hardest one in the game to guide because it is the most sluggish. And of course, I have to take snebs. You can't just take the AS-30, which I've always found kind of annoying, or you can't take it with the magic. And I got shot down by a Type 90B. That's awesome. Ay, yeah, yeah. Alright, I think you kind of get the idea with the AS-30, but I'm going to show it one more time so you kind of understand what I'm talking about without looking at the brightness of the reflection of the water, because that was blinding. Also, again, this thing is kind of like the Phantom, where you can go so fast that you are really going to have a tough time trying to guide your missile because of where it deploys. So we'll do it one more time. It's not as bad as it used to be. It still drops down a little bit, but yeah. So here's the maneuverability. See, it's probably the slug, most sluggish and also the inverted controls. Now I'm hitting down, or up, sorry, to go down and down to go up, almost like a the stick on an aircraft. But obviously when you're guiding a missile, you don't want to just kind of mess around with that. You just want it to be direct. So you want the missile to go down, you press down. You know, you want it to go up, you go up. So this is by default inverted from the AS-20, the AGM-12B and 12C bullpups. So yeah, you're gonna have to get used to that if you use the Mirage. It is a really good missile. It's very chunky. It will kill things. Um, occasionally you might not because you know splash damage can be total RNG at times. Can I fly under this? No, I cannot. Alright, but yeah, that's the AS-30 in a nutshell. We're going to move on to the RB-05A and then the KH-66. But as I was saying, uh, sorry I had to switch maps there, because, you know, game ending. Or else we'll get some AI targets. The handling characteristics of the RB-05A are really weird, where the right to left, so the yaw, is really sensitive at times and then sometimes the vertical is it's really weird this missile also you want to be careful when you fire this thing not in level flight its controls are going to be all over the place 
So I'm putting in left input, up input, well it's inverted so technically down. Now I'm putting up slash down input, you know, because it's inverted, and right. So you don't want to fire this missile, oh boy it's the helipad, <laughs> when uh, you're dogfighting you want to be really careful. You want to be able to snipe people with this. You want to have the aircraft in level flight in order to hit targets. This kind of applies for both air and ground, obviously, because it's in terms of guidance. But when you're in air RB, you definitely do not want to be just shotgunning this, because you will blow yourself up, as I did yesterday in a custom battle. <laughs> so you want to be really careful of that. Also, this, this version of the SAB... Uh, versus the SK-60 has better engines, so it's about 100 knots faster. So you want to be careful and use your air brakes uh, as to not compress into the ground when you're trying to guide this. There's a target right there. And... Whoop. Yeah, it's, it's every time I fire this, it catches me off guard. Because if I go from playing the A4, or say the G91R3, to this... I always instinctively want to press, uh, press the wrong button, and it will just go flying upwards, and I'll probably miss, and I'll, uh, you know, curse at myself for being an idiot. So yeah, if you're playing, and you want to use this aircraft or the SK-60 if you have the entry one, just be mindful that it is inverted. And also, I tried hitting invert controls, and for some reason, I think it was on the AS-30. I'm not sure about the RB-05. But it didn't even invert the controls, so I wanted to hot swap, you know, before the game and say, okay, I'll still be used to it, and it still didn't work. <laughs> so, yeah. I think it's just a bug on Gaijin's part, I really don't know why, but I also think it was a way to balance these missiles, considering that they are, one, dual purpose, two, really big in their explosion, and uh, are also really maneuverable. So, yeah. However, sometimes with the RB-05s, they randomly decide to just airburst on ground targets and not actually directly hit them. It's kind of a 50-50 chance. Sometimes you won't kill people because it will do that. Other times you will. It's not even getting me a kill cam, but yeah, that pretty much was just a shit ton of splash damage. As you can tell, it's roughly the size of an AS-30 Nord. However, it's not exactly the same in design. So, yeah. Who knows, they could have had similar guidance systems, hence why they are inverted, but they are the only two in the game to do so. There's another target. I love these missiles, though. And as you can see, another thing I forgot to mention, uh, that I kind of hinted at earlier, is that these lack uh, a smoke trail. I don't believe this is intentional, and to be honest, they probably should have kept them when they added the SK-60, because people not being able to see this tiny little white dot flying directly at them and then getting blown up in their 262s was pretty ridiculous. This thing on the dev server, the missile had a huge, huge smoke trail, like twice the size of the AGM-12B and 12C, and um, to be honest, it was actually kind of a challenge to guide things, but it kind of rewarded practicing with them and developing a little bit of skill in guiding them. Uh, that one helped you know, obscure ground targets to kind of give them a little bit of an edge in terms of hiding, but also probably would have helped players in RRB and Arcade, if you play there, with being able to see these things, because currently, like you saw, you literally cannot see them coming at you. It's, it should be added back, personally, um, and to be honest, these things, once you understand how to guide them, are quite frankly just easy mode, and it's really not fair <laughs> to be honest with you it's just it's just ridiculous and again uh, I bet if I fire this upside down it's gonna be fine I'm just gonna fire it generally oh yeah look firing it upside down so if you want to do that fire it upside down rip oh that only killed one <laughs> that's funny all right moving on to the beam riding ish missile on the act 38 and what will be the new MiG-21 PFM, which I do not have my hands on yet, so here we go. Here we are with the Yak-38, and my apologies, it's actually the KH-23M, although I thought there was a different nomenclature, which is like KH-66, I don't know. Uh, I could be completely wrong, I apologize for that. <laughs> but yeah, this is the KH-23M, and it's Sackwell's guided. So, 
this thing is, even though it's a Sacklos, which technically the AGM 12B is as well, uh, it's like beam rided. It's, it's, as you can see, there's a little pod there. I might be confusing my nomenclature here, and I apologize, but when it comes to the game, it really doesn't matter. You just gotta know that this is not guided by the keyboard, this is guided by where you were pointing. So, if we can find a target here, AI should be spawning. Where is their spawn? back there a little bit I don't know how well this works in hovering so I'm gonna test it out myself <laughs> right now but it's probably much easier if you're just flying normally because you want to keep the nose pointed properly oh there's one so no keyboard input as you can see you just got to kind of keep it on the crosshair there you go but it does kind of work when you're hovering nice one thing I noticed is that it's not in line with the crosshair, at least for me. It could be depending on the crosshair that you choose to look at, but I noticed that it likes to ride slightly above the crosshair, so on the edge, the top edge of my smaller crosshair circle, is where it kind of likes to fly towards. Could be because of the, the motion of the aircraft and or the camera view, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but you just want to keep that in mind. And honestly, if there is AA in the area, you probably don't want to fire this. If AA is most likely going to be looking at you. Because you have to guide it with the mouse. So it's not like when you fly with an A4 and you have bullpups. And you can kind of just maybe use your mouse to fly off to the right, you know, say there's an AA, you know, on the A cap right there shooting at me. You can kind of just kind of fly off to the side and look and use your eyes and just not really pay attention to what the plane's flying and kind of guide the missile. Um, however, you can't really do that with this. It's more so for things like that, where you're just kind of in close, kind of shotgun it, guide it just a little bit, get in, get out. So, yeah, that's more so what this missile is for. I've tried using it as more of a sniping missile, but while this is 9-3 and the entry is 9-7, you're not really going to see as many SAMs as you would say if you're playing 10-7. You're just going to have to worry about the Swedish uh, SAM that's 9-7, the Roland for Germany and France. So, yeah, it's pretty much all you got to really worry about. Um, but it, it definitely makes you a huge target. And honestly... It's kind of worth it on the AC-38, uh, considering they nerfed S-24 accuracy, so these things are most likely a little bit more reliable, considering you can guide them yourself over again. It makes you a really easy target if you're too focused on guiding. Because you can't, you know, guide the missile and wave off, because as you can see, it's trying to follow my lead almost, and I just nearly team killed Donovan. I'm sorry, Donovan. Sorry I had to do it to you. <laughs> but yeah. That's pretty much the gist of air-to-ground missiles on aircraft in War Thunder. While I crash the whale in cargo port. Just keep in mind, again, you do not want your controls inverted. You do not want relative control on. And the only missiles in the game that are inverted are the RB-05A and the AS-30 Nord by default. And I recommend you use AGM-12Bs and AS-20 Nords because you can hold more of them on NATO aircraft and they're just much easier to guide and just as deadly so go out there practice with them uh, just go into a custom battle like this with AI in practice that's what I did for weeks on end which is why I got really good with AGM 12 bs these missiles however just point and shoot and hopefully you'll get a kill and not get clapped out of the sky by you know a Gepard or something so, I hope this helps anyone who is curious on how to guide air-to-ground missiles. And while I'm probably going to slightly contribute to a little bit more cancer from <laughs> CAS, for those of you that are just completely, you know, dumbfounded and also probably get shit on for asking, how do I guide Nords on my G91R3? And no one wants to tell you. <laughs> uh, here you go. So, you're welcome. And... Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm Sid Wolf, and I'll see you guys next time.